Hello you guys, um, this is the last video for the Unit 2.1 Notes. Uh, we're going to look at Topic 4 here, um, which uh, is pretty short, so hopefully this is quick. Um, in Topic 4 we're going to look at some remaining um, cellular structures and what they do inside of cells. Um, and then that will be the, the end of our cell conversation. Um, I mean, well... For now, we'll talk about cells all year, but in terms of the, the basic structures and components of cells, this will um, be it for these notes. So um, one thing we haven't talked about yet is the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is this um, huge network of protein fibers inside of the cell that give the cell support and help maintain the shape of the cell, and they um, help position the organelles inside of the cell. They also assist, um, these protein fibers also help move or uh, help uh, for the movement of things within the cell. So sometimes certain packages or vesicles get moved across the cytoskeleton somewhere else inside of the the cell. And so, um, and the cytoskeleton is going to assist with uh, forming certain structures that help with the cell actually physically moving in its environment. Um, but anyway, this that's that's the cytoskeleton made up of the this this what looks like a web of of protein fibers. And so a lot of times in a picture, you don't really see the cytoskeleton because if they showed you the cytoskeleton, you would not be able to see anything because it's like everywhere. And it's so this picture is kind of like a nice little snippet that kind of displays this all these protein fibers inside the cell, these fibers of that are made of proteins um, that kind of give the cell support and structure and kind of anchor and support all these organelles that are just floating inside the cell, although they are actually held there by the cytoskeleton. Um, and things can actually be moved across the cytoskeleton. It provides, a lot of times it's synonymous to like the roads of the cell, like where things will actually be moved across these protein fibers um, to other locations inside the cell. Uh, there, that, that cytoskeleton, these protein fibers that we find in the cytoskeleton, there's three types. You guys don't need to know these three types. I mean, like you don't need to memorize this, um, but there are three types of, of protein fibers um, I just want you to be aware of these words and know that they're related to the protein fibers that make up the cytoskeleton. There's the microtubules, the microfilaments, and what's called the intermediate filaments. There's this table here that kind of gives you a brief overview of each of them. Please do not memorize any of this stuff. Just know that these three types of fibers form the cytoskeleton. Um, the actin filaments, which I'm, we call these the microfilaments. The microfibers are, the, are small. They're very thin and um, very thin protein fibers. Um, then there's the um, intermediate filaments, which are bigger. They're thicker than the microfilaments. And then you have the microtubules, which are the thickest. These are the thickest um, protein fibers that make up the cytoskeleton. So these ones are usually the easiest ones to see when we stain and look at a cell underneath a microscope, these really thick microtubules. Um, and these other ones are a lot thinner. Um, and they have specific functions that are somewhat similar, somewhat unique in terms of what they actually do for the cytoskeleton. But don't read or memorize that. You don't need to know that for this class anymore. Um, just be familiar with those three types of filaments um, that form the, the cytoskeleton. Um, then you have these structures called cilia and flagella. These are actually um, created because of the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is actually what's going to produce these specialized structures called the flagella and cilia. Flagella are these really long protrusions of the cell. Um, they look like these long tails, and usually cells, if they do have a flagella, it'll just be one flagella. Um, a lot of cells don't have flagella, um, and uh, we do see them, though, oftentimes in, in certain types of, a lot of times bacteria have flagella, um, and a lot of different types of protists might have flagella. There are some eukaryotic cells that have flagella found in, like, animals, for example, like you guys in humans, um, there's one type of human cell that has a flagella, and that's the sperm cell. A sperm cell has a flagella. Um, but that's this, and that helps to move. It whips around and helps move and propel the cell through um, through its environment. And then there's these uh, shorter protrusions called cilia. So cilia are these hair-like structures. They look like these fuzzy little hairs or, um, surrounding a cell. These are also protrusions of the cell, but they're a lot shorter. And this is also created because of the cytoskeleton. So the cytoskeleton, those protein fibers are actually what's extending out and forming this structure and forming these structures here, the cilia. Cilia are usually way more numerous and they cover usually a, a huge portion of the cell. There's a lot of them. Um, and they also have to do with, with movement. Um, they 
whip around just like the flagella and they can also be used to move a cell in this environment. Um, again, especially in, in certain types of single-celled organisms like prokaryotes or protists. Um, and then cilia can also um, not just only move the cell, but sometimes it's a stationary cell, a cell that doesn't really move, um, but it does have cilia and it, the cilia helps to move things across the surface of the cell. Um, a good example of that is in your guys' trachea, you guys have, so your trachea is the tube that brings air to your lungs. In that trachea, the inside of it's lined by these cells that do have cilia. So your um, respiratory cells that line your trachea, they have cilia, these little microscopic protrusions of the cell. And what they do is they actually, um, well, these cells secrete mucus. So there's mucus lining the inside of your trachea and that mucus helps to trap debris and dirt in the air that you're breathing. So that mucus gets nice and dirty to clean the air before it goes to your lungs. And then the cilia, what it does is the cilia is constantly moving, those, those hair-like structures are moving to actually pull the mucus upward away from your lungs and towards your throat. And then throughout the day, you guys are just constantly swallowing it, actually, this dirty mucus down your esophagus to your stomach. Um, and that's, uh, which is way better than it going to your lungs. And so that's, that's another example of cilia helping with moving. In this case, it's not moving. The cells aren't moving, but it's helping to move a substance across the surface of the cell. And so, um, that's cilia and flagella. Then we have the cell walls. Um, certain types of cells do have cell walls, not our cells. Um, but prokaryotic cells, they do have a cell wall. This is the very sturdy structure that's outside the plasma membrane. So... Um, the plasma membrane would be on the inside, um, which you can't really see. It's like this thin yellow line here. And then on the outside of it, you have this much thicker structure. That's the cell wall. Um, bacteria have a cell wall. Their, ba their cell wall is made of peptide duglycan, which um, is a, a, a polysaccharide. Um, and then a in, in plants, they have a cell wall like this picture here. This is a plant cell. And their cell wall is made of the polysaccharide cellulose. Um, that's the cell wall. But remember, animal cells do not have a cell wall. Uh, then um, the last thing on here is these junctions that hold cells together. So oftentimes, cell, well, in, in multicellular organisms, organisms that are made of many, many, many cells, those cells um, are, are a lot of times connected to other cells. So in your guys' body, like your cells are not just floating around randomly. Um, I mean, you do have certain cells that are free moving inside your body, but a lot of times in your, your body tissue, um, there's a bunch of cells that are anchored together, like they're connected um, to form body tissue. And this is true in plants and in animals. There's cells connected to other cells to help form the structure of that multicellular organism. And so the things that connect the cells together, we call those cell junctions. Um, in plant cells, they have a, a special uh, cell junction called plasmodesmata. Plasmodesmata are these tunnels between adjacent plant cells. So here's a plant cell over here. There's another plant cell over here that you can see right here. They're connected together because plant cells, a lot of times in plants, are going to be anchored together. And these structures called plasmodesmata are these structures that are actually holding them together. And it actually forms a tunnel between their cell membranes and their cell walls that actually allow stuff to flow from this cell, plant cell, to this other plant cell through, directly through these secret little tunnels that form these junctions holding the plant cells together. So through the plasma desmata, things can um, travel like certain nutrients or chemicals or a water a lot of times will travel through the plasma desmata um, so that it can easily move between plant cells. Um, so that, that's in plant cells. Now in animal cells, um, animal cells are held together too in our different body tissues. Um, there's three types of cell junctions that you guys need to know for animal cells. One type is called tight junctions. Tight junctions are like these beaded seams between adjacent cell membranes. Um, and so imagine, I don't know if this picture is clear to you guys, but imagine like there's a, an animal cell over here on the left side. There's an animal cell over here on the right side. And this is where their two cell membranes meet. And there's these protein structures that are kind of beating together um, their cell membranes, kind of like it's being sewn together. And that's holding their cell membranes together so that these two cells are right next to each other. And it actually creates, a, we call it a tight junction because it creates a very, very tight connection between these cells that's actually impermeable to water and other molecules. So molecules can't squeeze between them. So for example, on your guys' epithelial um, tissue, so like um, uh, 
cells that are lining surfaces inside your body um, or like on your skin. I guess we can talk about your skin. It's easier to think about. So like this, this epithelial tissue that um, makes up your guys' skin, those skin cells are held together by tight junctions. So here's, uh, you would have like skin cells right next to each other and they're held together by these tight junctions so that things can't go in between the cells. So the only way to get across is they would have to like literally be transported into the cell and then out of the cell the other side. They can't like squeeze their way between the cells. So those are tight junctions. Um, and then there's um, structures called desmosomes. Desmosomes are these much larger protein structures that anchor cells together. Um, and so these are, are a lot larger than tight junctions. Um, they're kind of like, they're usually compared to like the rivets that you see in two pieces of sheet metal that are fused together. And so we can like form these, oh, you guys probably don't know what a rivet is, but um, if you do, then that would make a lot more sense. Google a picture of a, a rivet, a metal rivet, um, and it holds the two cells together very strongly. So desmosomes are actually these very, very strong anchored connections between adjacent cells. So there's a cell over here and there's a cell over here and there's this huge protein complex holding them together. And there would probably be many of these holding those two cells together, but they're very strong. So desmosomes are the really strong ones. And these are really important for um, certain types of uh, body tissue that are gonna undergo a lot of mechanical stress. Um, where those that tissue, that body tissue is being stretched or compressed a lot. And so those cells need to really hold on to each other so they don't get torn apart. A great example is your guys' muscle tissue. So your muscle cells, the cells that make up your muscle, those muscle cells are all connected with a lot of desmosomes that hold them together really strongly. So especially when you're trying to lift something up or pull something, um, your muscles get stretched and are pulling each other a lot because that's the function of muscle cells is to pull things and contract and things like that. And so they have to hold on to each other really tightly. Um, so that's desmosomes. And then there's um, gap junctions. Gap junctions are actually very similar to plasmodesmata, which are found in plants. But gap junctions, this is another example of one found in animal cells. So between um, animal cells, adjacent animal cells, um, sometimes you'll have these tunnels, these protein structures that are holding the cells together that actually have a tunnel going between them. Those are called gap junctions. So it's made up of these, these proteins that are anchoring the two cells together. Um, but then there's actually a tunnel that goes between them so that things can very quickly and easily move and be transported between adjacent cells. And so um, there's a lot of examples of this in your guys' um, in, in, in certain body tissues that you have. Um, but this would allow uh, um, lots of molecules and stuff to easily go from this cell to the next cell to the next cell um, without ever having to really leave the cell. So like they don't have to go out of the cell and into the next cell. They're just going through these little secret tunnels, just like in Plasmodesmata. This is the animal cell version called gap junctions. Um, and uh, that's it for this topic, the last topic of unit 2.1. So I'll go ahead and answer all those questions and I'll see you guys in class.